nobody knows what their original forms were, whether they were smiling Buddhas, angels, or meditating monks. Their bodies are in pieces and their faces smashed. Only mottled layers of paint, exposed clay walls, and the ethereal whisper of the caves remain. A millennium of religious turmoil has left its mark. This is the Kizil Caves of the ancient kingdom of Kucha. In 1961, the Kizil Caves, along with the Forbidden City and the Morgao Caves in Dunhuang, were listed as the first key historical sites under state protection. Two sites became well known, but few know about the kingdom of Kucha and the Kizil Caves. Following the 1911 revolution of new democracy, local forces battled for supremacy in Xinjiang. A German named Albert von Lecoq was preparing for an expedition to Kucha. German authorities warned him of the possible danger when he applied for a visa. But Lecoq ignored their advice and embarked on the expedition as scheduled. He had once visited the Kizil Caves, and nothing could stop him from seeing them again. Kizil means red in Uyghur. The name comes from a mountain located across from the Musat River, which appears red at twilight. The honeycomb of caves on these steep cliffs stretches for miles. Though work on them began nearly a century earlier than the Mogao Caves in Dunhuang, they remained unknown for centuries. In 1905, a royal expedition, including Le Cook, departed for Xinjiang, an area known as a paradise for Western explorers. In 1900, Swedish explorer Sven Heden discovered the ruins of the ancient Lulan Kingdom. Later, other explorers, such as the UK's Oral Stein, France's Paul Pelio, and Japan's Zuichio Tachibana, arrived, making many major archaeological discoveries. The cook knew that he had missed many opportunities. But when he arrived at the Kizil Caves in January 1906, he felt that fate was fully making up for it. The caves were in bad shape. Local peasants grazed sheep by the caves and cooked over a fire in the caves in the winter. The 
Cook was dumbfounded when he entered the cave. He felt that wall paintings were the most beautiful he'd ever seen in Central Asia. He was especially amazed that the figures in the murals looked so familiar. He reported that the figures we saw in the flickering light resembled people from the European Middle Ages. The royals stand on their toes, outfitted gorgeously like warriors and carrying long swords at their waists. It was as though they were in a gothic tomb. Cook wrote, it seems that China had contact with Europe in ancient Greek and Roman times. The two great civilizations at the two ends of the Eurasian continent were at their apex 2,000 years ago. They were always curious about and searching for each other, but we always assumed from history that their paths never crossed. This makes the Greek-style murals in the Kizil Caves a mystery. In 138 BC, Zhang Qian was appointed Imperial Han Envoy for the West. This has been regarded as marking the beginning of the Silk Road. Two hundred years before Zhang Qian, Alexander the Great had already conquered the western section of the future Silk Road. In 334 BC, his troops advanced eastward and conquered almost all of the areas they reached during the next decade, including the Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Arabian Sea, and even the Indus River. In 323 BC, Alexander suddenly died. His empire quickly collapsed, but Greek culture took root in the areas that he conquered. Gandhara in Central Asia became a melting pot of Greek and Buddhist cultures. The image of Apollo, for instance, is used to depict Buddha with a straight aquiline nose, curly hair and Greek robe, but with Buddha's deep-set eyes and typical Buddhist expression. These early depictions of Buddha provide the best evidence of cultural integration. The style of Buddhist art spread from Gandhara eastward along the Silk Road. Images of the Greek sun and moon gods are also found in the Kizil Caves, substituting for the Buddhist sun and moon deities. The image of Garuda, the Greek and Hindu mythical bird-like creature, can also be found here. The cook immediately began to number the caves and copy and photograph the murals. The paucity of written records means that these crumbling murals are the only clues left. The worshippers pictured in the murals 
financed the cave construction. In cave 205, the cook and expedition director, Grun Vedel, found some special worshippers. They were richly dressed, sword-bearing worshippers with halos. The discovery provided the key to understanding the history of the Kizil Caves. And there was more. In a damp and poorly preserved cave, they found a few special figures. One of them wears a black wig with a small bottle in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. He is undoubtedly a painter. In cave 212, they found a scribbled line meaning by the Syrian painter Manib Hadra. Syria is a West Asian country, a long way from Kucha. But the distance between Xinjiang and Syria might not have been such a formidable barrier. Archaeological discoveries are showing that the people from the two regions long ago established contact. Sassanid Empire. Perhaps the Syrian painters were fleeing from the warfare. Though Kizil sheltered refugees and their cultures, it could not protect itself from erosion, war, and religious conflicts. Statues were destroyed and murals were defaced and even looted. Many passageways connecting the caves collapsed and some murals were mildewing and crumbling. Cook wanted to ship the murals back to Germany. He reasoned that it was necessary because of the unrest in the region. But Grunvedel insisted that the murals were more valuable than they were. In the end, time was tight, and Lecoq had to leave for Kola and leave the murals behind. His second expedition to Xinjiang began in 1912, and he arrived at Kizil during the Revolution for New Democracy. Mm -hmm. 
Grunwedel did not join him due to illness, so Le Cook was free of Grunwedel's restrictions. With the help of his assistant Bartus, he cut up mules and packed them in wooden boxes to be shipped to Germany. Sishan 仅从科萨尔一个石窟就接取了近五百平方米壁画，都是我们这里的精华。The next person to visit the Kizil Caves was archaeologist Huang Wenbi on his 16-day expedition in 1928. After that, the world once again forgot about the caves. Then, in 1946, a Chinese artist named Han Luran came to the Kizil Caves. He wrote on a wall, I came here alone on June the 5th, 1946, and saw a myriad of cave mules with higher artistic value than any I've seen before. Unfortunately, the mules from most walls have been cut out by foreign expeditions. This is a great loss to our culture. In 1929, Han went to France and established the Society of Chinese Artists with Chang Shu Hong. And in 1947, Han led another expedition to the Kizil Caves. They spent two months carefully numbering the caves and copying and photographing the mules. They even discovered a new cave. Unfortunately, their plane crashed in Gansu. Han Luran, together with all the materials they gathered, perished. Today, the Kizil Caves are under state protection. The Xinjiang Kucha Research Institute is in charge of the preservation and daily management of 614 caves. Zhao Li has worked at the institute since she graduated 19 years ago and is now its vice president. For years, she's been working to track down the Kizil mules that are now overseas. Her research indicates that only 145 of all the mules shipped to Germany are still in German museums. Most of the other 250 mules were destroyed in World War II. were moved to bunkers and air raid shelters. Unfortunately, other particularly beautiful ones that were cemented to the walls were destroyed during the war. In contrast, 
The mules Lecoq believed would soon be eroded away are still in good shape today. Cook died alone and in poverty in 1930, but he probably would have been surprised by what happened to the two groups of mules. The caves were inspired by religious faith. Buddhist monks used the caves for their religious practices. Explorers and artists have been fascinated by their incomparable artistic value for centuries. They still are a place of historical and artistic interest even today. In spite of their aged appearance, we can still feel the overwhelming compassion and radiance benevolence of the Buddha in the deteriorating murals, even in the dark caves. One cultural relic unearthed near the Buddhist grottos was shocking. The discovery of a phallic symbol in the Kuchar region where Theravada Buddhism prevailed is a mystery. We'll explore all of this in part five.